Today is Sunday, December 29th, 2019, and today I am going to be showing you how to install RetroPie and then use it to also pull double duty as a pie hole. All right, first, let's get started with the essentials. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi, and I recommend at least a version 2, if not a version 3. You'll also need the ability to connect it up to a monitor or television, and I recommend a wired Ethernet connection to your router. Uh, you'll also need a keyboard and mouse, uh, or at least a keyboard. Uh, and in the case of RetroPie, you'll also need some kind of uh, controller, be it a USB-based N64 or a USB-based Super Nintendo, uh, because that is how you navigate around inside of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and power this device off and show you from scratch how we go through this process. Here we are, I've got a fresh OS install so that I can go through this with you and have it be a little bit more realistic, including me forgetting my password. This is a fresh install of Elementary OS, which looks kind of like OS X. Uh, except it's not. It's Linux, and it's pretty darn interesting. Um, so I haven't uh, done really much customization on here. I installed Firefox, and that's it. All right, so um, I'm using my own notes. Uh, I put this up on OneNote, pulled it over with the blog, utility and now we're gonna just try and follow my instructions here i see that my numbering has disappeared okay so for this installation you're going to need a raspberry pi 2 or 3 you're going to need an sd card and i recommend that you get a class 10 or better um, now this is the card that we're going to be using i'm going to clear it before we move forward but i really kind of recommend that you go with a u3 the uh, Samsung Evo Selects are like an Amazon branded uh, thing. They're like 20 bucks these days. Uh, and you can just fit a lot more on there. So why not just go ahead and, you know, if you're going to buy one of these, it's probably just a few dollars more for that. And then uh, I put a little tiny heat sink on there. In retrospect, I put the wrong one on as that ended up on my other Raspberry Pi. But I digress. This is the 3 Model B+. Plus. And you can tell that because it's got the Raspberry Pi logo in the top right can corner on that little funky whatever that's called. And this USB-based controller is a complete knockoff. There's not even any contacts inside here for the Rumble Pack. And it said right on the page, the Rumble Pack will not work if you plug it in. So it's really just there for weight. And it also makes this annoying noise. It doesn't have the right stick-tivity. But once configured, this is going to have the ability to play some games as well as, in its idle time, do some ad blocking for us. So as stated, you need a Raspberry Pi, SD card, cords and connectors, a USB keyboard, a mouse is optional, and a game controller. All right. One final thing you need to know about this before you start installing RetroPie on your system. ROMs are not legal. Now, there's a whole article that you can go read and figure out what the details are. But basically, if you find a ROM that's for one of these fun games that you used to play as a kid, uh, likely you're violating some kind of intellectual property law. So what are your options? You can download a legal ROM, which has been created after the fact by wonderful people who have decided to share with us. You could try out some NES games like 2048 or Block Dude from the TI-83 or Christmas Craze or an open source game on the N64 like Pyro N64 or Dexanoid. So, you know, we'll get to that. We'll see if those run on RetroPie. First things first, I need to download RetroPie. And so for that, I'm downloading the Raspberry Pi 3 edition. So I'm going to get that going. Perfect timing. All right. So now we're going to pop this in my laptop. I'm going to launch Terminal. OK. 
Okay. We're going to initiate the uh, lsblk command. List the block storage devices. Oh, come on. Focus, you computer thing. We've got MMC BLK0, and that's the device that we're going to be working with today. And then we're also going to go to the downloads folder. And we're going to, oh yeah, we're going to do an ls command just to see what's in my downloads. Oh boy. We first need to extract the RetroPie file that we've got because it is a .gz file. When you download it, it's, well, it, it, it's not an image. It needs to be extracted because it's compressed. I find the easiest way is to just go to your files and to right click it and download it. You can be fancy and do it in the uh, terminal, but I'm literally not feeling smart. Yes, I would like you to extract. Why are you having so much problem focusing today? Why am I having problems focusing today? Extract. Thanks, sir. Run the ls command again. Fancy. And now we've got that image file. So now we are going to reference the mmc blk0 with the dd command. So it's dd if, and it's if is the source and of is the destination. So it's if, all right. So dd source, the RetroPie image file of slash dev slash MMC BLK zero. And I hit the tab key to get those to autofill. Otherwise you end up taking a source file and putting it to a source file if you don't put it to a device. The DV is device, MMC of BLK zero is the SSD or the SD card right there. And then I like to do block size 64 status equals progress. Oh, I forgot to do sudo. Can't do it. You got to sudo it. But here's a trick. Sudo, bang, bang, runs the prior command with sudo credentials. Check it out. It's doing the thing. Uh, the uh, status equals progress command uh, gives you this little readout as it's going through things. It seemed kind of slow with the... Uh, Block size equals 64. So I just ran it without that. And now it's running at 8. So we'll check back when it's done. I take it back. I did it wrong. It's supposed to have an M on the end. BS equals 64M. So 64 at a time. Focus! And that is uh, just a slight bit faster. Almost done. It's 2 point something gigs. All right, we're done. Next. Oh. There we go. We're greeted with the all familiar rainbow and the initial setup screen. Resized root file system rebooting. All right. Good to see. And there we go, RetroPie. And the first thing we should see is the setup page for our controller a few minutes later. There we go. So you hold down a button on the controller and it brings it up. And at this point, I want to give a little shout out to Linux for Unme as I was a little confused about the way that the N64 was set up. And so I've got a link to that. Up, down, left, right, start. Select will be the back Z trigger. The Z trigger. Up, down, left, right, start, Z. I can't do this with one hand. Sorry, right. if you hit the wrong button, you can just restart. Uh, a button, B to button, there are no x and y buttons oh maybe there are x and y buttons there are no x and y buttons so you long press 
to get past it. And then you click the shoulder button. The There is no left trigger. There is no right trigger. The left thumb does not exist. Uh, left thumb. No, I'm going to have to check this guy's video. No left thumb, no right thumb. But analog up, down, left, right. Uh, we don't have an analog up or down or left or right. And then he said to set the Z also for the hotkey enable. And OK. And it should boot up. Okay, at this point, what we need to do is go ahead and get into RetroPie. And this is why having this game controller is important because this will not respond to keyboard controls. Or at least I never got it to respond to keyboard controls. So that's why it's important that we have the controller. So launch RetroPie. And then you want to come down to the raspy config because our next step is to get this talking to the rest of our network so that we can get into the console port on here. So we want to launch raspy config. Well, we should plug in the keyboard too. That helps. All right. And then we're going to go into interface options and we're going to SSH and we're going to enable SSH. And now it's enabled. Woo! Uh, and now you also want to just display your network um, or configure your Wi-Fi. So I recommend that you plug your device in to your network. You can use this wirelessly. It's just probably better if you want to set it up wired. Um, you can also change the host name if you like. Uh, and if you have a different hardwired network interface, maybe a USB one, uh, you might be able to change it in here. I'm going to leave all this stuff the same for now. And we're getting out of the config menu because we're done setting up SSH. And then we want to show the IP. At, oh, that's, oh, that's right. It doesn't work. We got to use the controller. Show the IP address. And it's going to launch back into a see things. And I should see, yes, 192.168.1.51. So what is it that we were going to plan on doing with that IP address? Well, I guess we should play some games first. That's kind of reason number one for having this available to us. So the easiest way is to SSH over the network and just dump files over there. And so I would like to do that with a utility called FileZilla because we're on Linux. Now on Epiphany, well, no, not Epiphany, Ele Elementary OS, there's a app center. So let's see if FileZilla, it is available and I can click it. I don't have to run the sudo apt-get install command. All I have to do is plug in my password. This elementary OS setup is like pretty slick. Um, a lot of the commands are like very similar to the uh, um, Apple-ish type things. Um, take, for example, um, control panel, which is system settings. Um, that looks like a dead ringer for the control panel on OS X. A lot of little tweaks like that. I saw a video that showed a lot of those different things. All right, so did it finish installing? Yes, it did. Okay, great. So we are going to punch in our host IP address, which I know is 192.168.1.51. Uh, let me just back up one second here. If you did need to install FileZilla from the command line, it would be usually sudo apt-get 
install file Zilla. Fozilla. Make a sense? You would run that and that would install it. Same idea. All right. Uh, so I've got that. The username is pi, P-I, and the password is raspberry. And you know why that is? Because, and the port is 22. And that's because it's a Raspbian OS. So just, just to, to show you that we're actually... We're going to hold off on that. Let's connect first. Sure, save the password. Uh, some kind of thing. Yeah, great. Hey, we connected. So I have some files in my downloads. I got to see, where am I supposed to put them? Into the RetroPie ROMs folder. Well, I don't see a RetroPie ROMs folder. I see a RetroPie folder, but I don't see a ROMs just see all these subfolders under configs. I'm going to restart this and then we'll try this again. Using the controller, of course. Come back in. Quick connect. All right, pi, and then retro pi, and I'm supposed to see it's in the wrong folder. There's the ROMs folder. Okay, so I got a couple different names, a couple different files. So these uh, particular ones are, these ones are Nintendo files. This is a Nintendo 64. This one is a Super Nintendo. This is an N64 file. So I'm going to put those into the appropriate locations over here. These are free games. These are not games that cost money. Uh, someone has released them under a free and open license. Let me just reiterate. These are not owned by Nintendo. All right. So those successfully uploaded. Let's restart again. Let's give these games a try. I'm going to open up Nintendo and 2048. Twenty forty eight works great. I also have not played this game in a very long time, so I'm a little rusty. Uh, Oh, I missed one. So to get back to the menu, you hold down start and select at the same time, and it brings you back to the main um, the main menu. Let's try a block dude. And this is a port from the TI-83. Bum, 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 ba, da, 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 da. There's no music. There might be music. I just don't know. I've never played this game before. Oh. Hey, let's try that Super Nintendo game. Ooh, greedy, nasty aliens stole Christmas. Wow, this like is period specific. Gotta be audio here. Why is the audio not working? Oh, 
Oh, the aliens got me. Uh, I have some headphones plugged into this, but I think we need to go into the settings to enable the sound to be out the correct thing. So it's not HDMI, but it could be both. Ah, for audio, because I have HDMI, the audio is being routed out that, despite retro whatever's thing. So I've got the headphone jack plugged in on my particular thing. I need to go into the audio menu, and from within there, select the headphone jack. And now the audio should work. I had to restart a few times, play with the sound settings. These headphones are not great, but they have some audio now. There I die. All right, quit out of there. All right, so um, now, now we want to, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. oh yeah, we want it to make this into a pie hole. So we want to SSH into the pie. So for me, I'm just going to copy and paste this. You will have to modify your IP address on here to use the appropriate uh, local IP address. And recall that you can do that right from the menu. You go RetroPie, you go down to Show IP, and it shows you in tiny letters what your IP address is. And Linux is case sensitive, and I copied and pasted. Yes, add that thing. Raspberry is the password. R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. Raspberry. And there we are. We see that we're logged in. It's a Raspbian image, but it's also got the doodly doodly wootsits. Now, to install Pi-hole, it's, it's just so easy. Uh, I've, I've, where is it? All we have to do is copy this. We're going to curl a website, um, a bash script, and it's going to do everything for us. All we have to do is click next. So I'm going to just paste that in. Control Shift V and hit enter. And then it's just going to do its thing. I'm going to let it run. Yes, I am okay with that. You should donate. You need a static IP. I am using Ethernet Cero because that's what's plugged in. This would be the opportunity to change that. Uh, I'm, I've got a selection for which DNS provider I would like to do. So uh, I did a little research. I kind of liked Quad9. Um, I think Google is turning evil, even though I've got this video posted on the YouTubes. Um, so we're going to go with this. And then, yeah, that's totally fine. We're going to get all those lists. We're only doing IPv4, but that's also fine. And it's confirming what our IP address is. Uh, warning me about IP address conflicts. Do I want to install the... Yes, I do want the web admin. And then uh, do you want to install the, the web server? Yeah, I'm okay with that. And then do you want to log all queries? I'm okay with that. This is for my house. So I'm okay logging things for personal utilization. Why does it keep focusing in and out like that? That's so annoying. Um, and a privacy mode for FTL. Same thing. It's my house. It's my things. I don't care that I'm logging myself. It's going to continue doing the rest of these things. Oh. Please wait. All right, well, that's installing. I'm going to go over to my router locally, uh, and I'm going to set it so that all the IP addresses um, 
that it gives out default to using the Raspberry Pi as the DNS server because that is how your uh, clients like my phone are going to get this Raspberry Pi on the network. Maybe I should just briefly describe this. So you've got the interwebs out there. And in order to get uh, a web server, say jaronhavel.com, that's at some address. That is not my address, but that's the address out there on the internet. There is a server that my machine talks to on the internet that would connect me up. So if your modem was here, and then you have your router, uh, so there's my router modem thingy. I don't know, I've got a DSL here, but you might have a different type of service. So this will have Wi-Fi in it, and it'll also give you the ability to plug in a regular old school, um, you know, desktop PC uh, or a laptop if you hardwired it, or or a, a little Raspberry Pi. So um, if one of these clients wants to go out to the internet to a website and end up at Jaren dot Jaren Havel dot com it's going to go out to a dns server first and what a dns server does is it actually references this name that i've registered in a database and it goes scanning through until it finds my name and it says oh hey that name lines up with this ip address and that's one way of resolving it so it's resolving jarenhavel.com to numbers and then it'll provide me these numbers it'll send that all the way back to my PC, and then my PC will go and connect directly at the address. So it's really a directory name, if you will. Um, so what happens with this pie hole thing? Pie hole. What's well, actually just pie? There's no e. Um, that's another device you've got on your network. And so let's just say your friend comes over with their laptop, and it's going to connect to the wireless. This router here gives them an IP address. And so it's going to give them IP. It's going to give them a DNS server. And it's going to give them maybe some other stuff too. But the important thing is that it gives it an IP address. So that's going to be the 192.168.1.37. You know, you know, that's going to be this person's laptop, for example. And the DNS should be the, the settings that are given out by the router. So usually it's going to be the router. You know, if that's the, the IP address of the router, it'll be a 192.168.1.1. Sometimes it's 254.254. Whatever your router's IP address is right here locally on, on, we'll call it this side of the fence. This is your, you know, this router is your firewall. It's also like a little switch. It's like a multi purposed device. So if your DNS server was run from the router, it'll go out and talk to the router and the DNS infrastructure out there on the interwebs and do this DNS resolution thing. Um, but let's say that there's a advertising website and it's, you know, it's loading up, you know, a little picture of like uh, socks right here. Um, and it's coming from uh and it's, you know, that IP address and it's from like ads at AOL.com. Um, what this little Raspberry Pi hole dealio does is you set it as the DNS server. And so instead of your DNS going from here, uh, what was the name of? Yeah, my IP address for this Raspberry Pi hole is 192.168.1.51 and this is a new dns server so when my friend tries to get out to the internet he's going to talk to the dns server 
So he's going to talk to this 1.51 address. So he's going to get 1.51 for DNS resolution. And he's going to say, hey, I want to go out on the internet. And what happens is that it will recognize from the lists that we just referenced that this advertisement for these socks or whatever came from ads at AOL.com and it will block ads at AOL and it will uh, you know, do, do whatever it does and essentially it won't come up on your screen over here. So if you're loading the web page through the Pi blocker, then you're going to get jaronhavel.com without my ad for socks. Okay, let's get back to uh, where we're at. So here's my router on my network, my wireless router. So the number one thing I did is I went into the DHCP server settings and I staticked this MAC address for the wired address to be 1.51. So that Raspberry Pi, when it's plugged into my network, is always going to give out 1.51 to that device. And then in my DHCP server settings, I set the DNS server to 1.51. So as long as my Raspberry Pi is on, I will be able to resolve names with the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And now we can go back over to the Pi. And it says, here, you're all set. And here is your password. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to the address. 192, 168, 1.51 pulls up the admin page and I come down here and I paste in the password. All right, so we're in. So now we need to give it a test. But let's see what it looks like without the pie hole. So let's disable the pie hole for five minutes. Um, so this should have advertisements on it. Pretty chip. Scrolling down, advertisement, trying to load there. There we go. All right. Great. Some yoga poses with the laptops. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Um, all right. So we obviously have advertisements. Now let's uh, go back. Let's close this. Uh, can we just like re enable it real quick? Same website. I didn't even clear the cache. Let's see what happens. Did not work. Stored data. Clear everything. Clear the data. Even though it didn't clear the history. Now let's see. Advertisements. Ooh. All right. So it's working great. Awesome. Okay. To make that disable re-enable thing uh, a little bit more accessible, it is right over here on the side uh, and it's quite easy to use, but you just have to log into it. There's actually a little utility that someone wrote. I found this on uh, Reddit. Um, this Spencer guy created a plugin for Chrome and for uh, Firefox. And all you have to do is go into your Pi Hole settings. Huh. Log in again, you stinker. And uh, go to your uh, API web interface tab. And then you find this button right here that says show API token. And so I click on that and what, uh, and it'll say, are you really sure you wanna show your token? And it's going to show a QR code with this long string. So I'm going to copy this string and then I can use that with this uh, remote switcher application thing. Uh, so for Chrome, all right, just loaded up Chrome and there is a plugin for Chrome on the Chrome web store. It's called the remote switch for Pi Hole. And I'm going to add that as an extension. And now I've got this little icon up here on the top. And I can right click and I can manage the extension. 
and it comes up and I want to come down to extension options and that's where on Chrome you're able to paste in or scan that QR code from um, back before. So what do we got? We have RetroPie and PyHole. And you can find out more details and click all the links on my website on jaronhavel.com and you'll find the link to this article. And then I know you're going to end up spending a whole bunch of time playing on these games. I knew there was audio. I'm going to keep playing this. But uh, you have a wonderful, happy, merry new year. If you get a chance, go ahead and click the subscribe button. And click the bell and all the things. And check out my other videos. I like to cook and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Subscribe!